die, you little bitch. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Rabbit and Blue Radio with the Skeleton Crew. This is Alex, Michael J, and our special guest host, Dan J. And here we are. At the movie that the world has been waiting for, for what was it, Mike? 16 years? Yeah. About 16 yeah. years. Freddy vs. Jason. A wonderful, wonderful film that I saw in the theater twice. No, three times. I saw that one three times. Ooh, I saw it twice, Mike. You got one up on me, brother. Wow. Yeah. Well, okay, let's get to some technical things that we know about this before we get into the movie itself. Now, what I always thought was really big news was that Corey Feldman actually signed... Like, the rumors were that he signed on to reprise his role as Tommy Jarvis. That 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 was rumored around um, January of 2003, I believe. And then, su- supposedly, he didn't end up getting the character at all because of disagreements about how he was going to be portrayed. Hmm, that's interesting. I'd love to hear what that uh, role was going to be like. Yeah. That would have been awesome. That would have taken that movie to a whole other level. Yeah. I agree. I wonder if that script's out there. We'll have to uh, search for that one. Yeah, stick that up. Well, we okay. <laughs> but I, I just want to touch on, on Feldman first now. You said that he was disappointed or didn't like how they were going to portray him. Like, okay. really? <laughs> uh, and, and All right, second of all here. He's not the best Tommy Jarvis, okay? He may be a fan, you know, he may be a fan favorite. I don't think so. But to some fanboys, he may be that because Ooh. of the simple That's debatable, fact. Mike. That's debatable. Well, no, because people are going to say, well, you know, he played him in part four. La, da, 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 da. But you right. know what? I mean, come on. Feldman wouldn't have the balls to get that boulder with the chain on it and throw Jason at the bottom of Crystal Lake, all right? I, I just, I got to put that out there, because he wouldn't. Okay, now Tom Matthews. Oh, Wait, where's my cuckoo sound effect? Yeah, seriously. I mean, really, come on, guys. Feldman brought nothing new to the party. Tom Matthews did. So Tom Matthews, first of all, should have played Tommy Jarvis in that film. Corey Feldman should have just been, and I love Corey Feldman, but he should have just been thankful to get the offer to do the film, okay? What, were they going to make Tommy Jarvis gay or something? Or did he not like Megan? Is that the problem? All right, this get, that's this, probably this, the whole thing. This is totally ridiculous. Okay. I know that. <laughs> Moving <Really>? on. <laughs> okay, let's get into the Kane Hodder fiasco. Now, I have a definite opinion on this. Okay. 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 Like What's I'm not. That? I'm not the. I'm not the biggest Kane Hodder fan. But, but he, here's the thing. Kane Hodder not being rehired as Jason. You would think the studio executives number one would see Kane as a huge selling point. Like Robert England and Kane Hodder finally. You know the two guys. You know Kane eventually adapted the role as his own. He is the face. Uh, as, oddly enough, there is no real face of Jason. But yeah. He's the he face. embraced it at the conventions and stuff, too, though. You know, he was the face of Jason. It's just, exactly. it's his role at this point. He's right. Really. So, the reason that not having Kane Hodder didn't work for this movie is because it didn't feel like the movie we were waiting for. Like, in part one through six, you know, we always associated that Jason to that movie. It was, it was almost like each actor who played Jason added his special touches to make each movie unique. Now... They made Jason fit those movies because that's all we know, really. I mean, so we associated it that way. So it worked. Then Kane, and then Kane took over, and by that time, when you heard Freddy vs. Jason was happening, 
the the thrill of getting the two familiar characters in a film together was like you imagine Kane Hodder in a movie with Freddy. You know, with Freddy, we became familiar with his voice, his face, his movements, his mannerisms. With Kane, we became familiar with his body frame, his mannerisms, also his movements, his walk. So when they finally got so when they finally got together. None of those characteristics or familiar nuances we grew up with for the last 16 years and four movies were in Jason. It didn't feel like the culmination we anticipated. You know, instead, it was like they just dressed up someone else and just to fill in for the real guy. Well, that's exactly what they did. Yeah, like, right. you know, like, as good as some parts of the movie were, it, it didn't have that authentic feeling it was supposed to have. And the best analogy I could... I could come up with is it's like a football team like I'm a Bears fan so imagine I spent all year watching Matt Forte Brian Urlacher Earl Bennett Julius Peppers Johnny Knox and you know my favorite quarterback Jay Cutler clobber the league all year they beat the Packers they beat the Lions they beat the Vikings and they beat whoever they got to beat in the playoffs they make it to the Super Bowl and then they replace everyone on the team with different guys and then we're watching and now you know you're watching everybody play this game in Bears uniforms but it's not the guys that that you watched all year and it's like well what is this it's it like i mean of course kane's not as crucial to the character as as jay cutler is to the to the bears or the other players but for for what it's worth and what it is it's it's basically the same difference you know what i mean that's why it didn't work it's not even about oh he should have played it or it lost the authentic feeling because he wasn't there yeah, you could definitely tell it was somebody new in, in the role. And exactly, you just hit it on the nose, dude. And, you know, between that and then the fan aspect, they just, they, they missed a great opportunity. And it's too bad, you know? Yeah. It's, I, I don't understand how movie executives would say, oh, really? You, you want to, you want to, like, don't all the fans know about this guy? Isn't he, like, com like crazy famous for playing Jason? Isn't oh, dude, there was a big this? campaign thing going when when all this was going down, right? On, on on all the social media stuff, everybody, you know, and and then when that news dropped that Kane didn't get it, there, <laughs> I mean, there was not only a backlash from him, but obviously the fans too. So they they fucked up. <laughs> and you know, this wasn't the first time this happened with iconic movie monsters. Like by the time Frankenstein was supposed to meet the Wolfman, Karloff already lost interest in playing the part. Like, um, mm -hmm. luckily, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, dude, you're right. <laughs> yeah, Lon, Lon Chaney Jr. did replies his uh, reprise his role as the Wolfman, but when they finally got all three of the the big monsters together, Bell Lugosi didn't play Dracula because of scheduling arrangements. You know, like you know, I'm I'm not the biggest Kane Hodder fan, but I do prefer him in the in the zombie role. You know, I think once Part Seven and Eight happened, you know, it just worked. Yeah, I and I think this installment too was not, you know, obviously not a remake, but they wanted to give enough backstory. It, they wanted it to stand alone and not be another sequel, so it had to be its own thing. And and I think that added to it too. I, I love the movie. I just want to say, but I definitely see what you're saying with this because I just I totally agree. It's just you gotta you gotta have that that continuity, not in the sense where look or anything, because I love his look in this one, and it's different from all the other ones. I'm not talking about that. I just mean if you're gonna make a fan movie, you gotta add in what the fans want, and and when you ditch that all together, it's like it's almost like a big f you, you know. So. Dude, but here here's why that's illogical. It's the point of this movie is that you're bringing someone one group of people love and someone another group of people love together the point is that your guy will be in this movie now against the other rivalry the other rival of of that genre so why how does it make any sense to say well let's make this stand on their own i think the point of having these two people meet is to have them meet why have someone else replace them and me? What what good is that? There's no value in that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't understand it. I mean, it doesn't mean it ruined the movie. Because I'm going to say a lot of great things about this movie. Right. I don't think there was a bad thing about the movie. Well, there you go. Except...
it felt more like a nightmare movie though than a Friday the Thirteenth. That that's one thing I was gonna get into. Was this a Freddy movie or a Jason movie? Clearly, Freddy. Yeah. Oh, dude, definitely <laughs> hands down. Now, what were your experiences like, Mike? When you first saw this in the theater, you know how we talked about how some movies are great the first time, and as you get them at home, it's like, eh, this kind of is not that great. Sometimes right. they're not that good in the theater, like Jason X. Then you get home, you watch it a couple times, eh, kind of grows on you. What did you think about this when you watched it? I was all for it from the opening of the movie, and then like as it just went on. I was I was loving it. I was a little upset that um, the scene with uh, Catherine Isabel in the uh, in the shower uh, that it really wasn't her naked and she had a body double. That was kind of disappointing. Yeah, it's funny you mention that because I was going to say the reason you like the opening, of course, is because the uh, chick who pulled her shirt open on the dock. Uh, no, I don't like her. Her boobs are too, no, her boobs are too big. Oh, too big. Yeah, we forgot. Oh. <laughs> okay. What did you yeah, think? Yeah, they, they are. It's like, Mike? And, like, she wants to go swimming or whatever, and she's, like, looking for the boyfriend, and then all of a sudden Jason, like, just impales her on the tree. I'm like, yes, good. Kill that big boob bitch. You know, what doesn't make sense about that, I guess we'll get into some what-the-f moments right now. Yeah. Okay. I'm in the understanding that, uh, or under the impression that Jason is dead, and right. he's somehow dreaming still and then freddy invades his dream makes believe he's his mother and just says you can't die and suddenly this corpse just inflates with fresh new lungs and a heart and well because jason was in hell and yeah he he's dreaming in hell, in hell. and he freddy says i had to search the bowels of hell and i found him so maybe that's jason's hell maybe that's what hell is Right. Is, is, you know, stuff like that. You, uh, who knows? Uh, you know, but. If if my hell is that I dream about big titty girls all night, then I'll go. I'll go to hell. hell <laughs> yeah. Whatever you want to call it, purgatory, stuck in stuck in a fucking thing that loops, whatever. But that's how I interpreted that. Was he was in hell and Freddie found him down there? And who knows if it was a yeah, like a dream or was it hell? I have no idea. I I went with it though. I thought it. Uh, I thought it was a good, logical way to go about that. You did? That. Yeah, I mean, as opposed to what, though? Just a lightning bolt again? Yeah, you know? I, yeah let's have another lightning bolt. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I mean really, though, how, many, how many ways can you, can you make Frankenstein, Jason, rise from the dead? So I thought it was great. Freddy invades dreams. So, like you said, whether it be dreams or hell, because Freddy's supposed to be in hell, too, correct? So right. It, so it just, you know, I bought it. It made sense to me as much as these movies can sometimes, you know. Right. So right. you gotta, you gotta just kind of go with it. Like, oh, okay, they're both in hell. Well, it looks like a dream to me too. And it, you know, and, and that's another thing. It didn't make sense with all the kids changing faces, and you know, it was just obviously Freddie was uh, manipulating that. But it's just like you said, you don't know what's really going on. But like I said, I didn't question it for a second. I just went with it. You know, I actually. Matt, I had the privilege of meeting Betsy Palmer about two or three times now. Uh, oh, nice. She comes to New Jersey a lot. Betsy Palmer, I asked her, I said, you know, my number one question at that point, I think it was our, I met her in like uh, 2005 or so. And I said, uh, hey, how come you didn't come back as Jason's mom in that movie? And she said, she, she said they were only going to pay her scale. Now, I don't know if I'm a little angry at her or the studio, and he, here's why. Mm -hmm. Listen, let, let's face it. She's at the end of her, her rope here. She's a, a very nice lady, but she's, I don't know how to say this nicely. She, she's probably going to be dead soon, right? <laughs> That's just a fact. Right, That's okay. <laughs> now, now, do you, now, does it really matter how much money you get paid to... To give people who absolutely love you one last treat before you go. I mean, does it really matter if you make three hundred or eight hundred dollars that day? What is the difference? There's a big difference. What you really think that she's an iconic character, and I think that she deserves every penny she gets, dude. She's probably got a family. You know what I mean? She probably wants to leave the money. Honestly, she's lucky they even offered her the job. I mean, really, it's an opportunity. 
She doesn't. She's not entitled to the role. Clearly, they got somebody else. Right, but I mean, she's still. She's the thing is though. She's still been acting. I mean, she retired a few years ago, but before that, she was acting kind of steady in in the horror genre anyway. So I think that she's kind of established herself, and I I think that she's entitled to a little more than scale for that role. I mean, honestly, she would have only been working on the movie one day, right? right? Almost positive, maybe one, maybe two days max. All right. They could have paid her a little more. I'm sorry, but they could have. I personally think she should have came back just for the fans alone. That's the role that made her where she's at. Right, exactly, and that's all I'm I really... agree with you totally. I'm just saying that's what that's basically her angle of it, and I can kind of see it maybe, but I think it's a little cocky and you know a little condescending to the fans because let's face it, if it wasn't for the fans, she wouldn't be where she's at. Period. Right. Yeah, and think of all the money we give her when we pay her for autographs and pictures. Right. Oh, yeah, twenty dollars exactly. a pop. She makes she's she's made whoa, 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 whoa. thousands. She charges for pictures too. Absolutely. Well, no, it's a it's a combo package. You get a picture also when you when she signs. How much? Does, how much? Mike, what are, what are you asking me for? I saw you with a hundred freaking pictures on your Facebook. Yeah, right? I know that, but I okay, never I never you? met her. <laughs> I never met her. So is she the standard twenty? Yeah. All right. So. We went to the. We talked about the Kane Hodder thing. Okay, so let's talk about the guy who played Jason. Um, me and Mike were talking earlier, and yeah, we mentioned how oddly enough the guy who played Jason was the short order cook at in Friday Thirteenth Part Eight that Jason threw up against the window in in the diner in New York. Yeah. Now, I bet Kane Hodder wishes he could reshoot, reshoot that scene a couple times. I would love to see that happen. <laughs> yeah, I think he would throw him a little harder these days. Yeah, break his back. <laughs> And I actually met I met both these guys and Ken Kersinger. I never met Kersinger. Kersinger, he's he's a much nicer guy than Kane Hodder uh, to me. Is he? To me anyway. Kane Kane was actually got pissed off at me when really yeah when when it was apparent that I found it odd that he thought he should have been cast as Jason in the remake. Yeah. He said he should have been or something like that, and I go, really? You think he should have? And the way he looked at me, like he wanted to bash my head in. Did he already sign your whatever by that point? Luckily he did, but unluckily we did not take the picture yet where he chokes you. Oh, yeah, God. exactly. <laughs> uh, so he squeezed, I'm going to guess, a little harder than most people, because I think most people would probably complain to the manager. if that. If uh, uh, Luckily I took it like a man. And uh, Freddy, what do you think of Freddy? He's finally a little bit dark again. He's not the comedian he was. I mean, he has a couple one-liners. Yeah. But what do you think about him being more closer to part one and two now than he has been in how many years? 20, 25? I don't know. Love it. Uh, Absolutely love it. Wait, wait. I I heard a, oh. No, I I still got the vibe that he kind of reminded me still of, like, the Nightmare for Freddy. Especially when he's like, got your nose. Yeah. Or, how sweet. Dark meat. <laughs> well, I, I think it was a good balance of that and, like Alex said, going back to the darker stuff, too. I thought it was perfect. I thought they they portrayed both of them perfectly, Jason and Freddy. Now, Freddy, like you said, it was Freddy's movie, man, and a lot of the dream sequences and all of that stuff, that's all Freddy setups, and that's what people love, you know? And, and I think that's why... The the um the series is so popular, you know, and it's just it, it, add that with Jason, and it's <laughs> it's gonna be a home run, man, you know. And the thing is with Freddie in this movie too, he it's almost like him and Jason built up to so much, like the whole movie to where the end battle scene it, it just felt so fucking epic and iconic. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So. So just the way they did it and how Jason came and swooped in and stole Freddy's kills and how, you know, it just seemed so organic that I loved it and I thought it was great. And how they intertwined Freddy's dream sequences with the real world and how, you know, you got to really come up with a pretty decent script in order to make this work. They could have easily fucked this movie up and I thought they did perfect with it. You know, I thought they killed it. They gave good, it really was good writing. Uh, but here's the thing. Okay, you talked about Freddy, or we all did. Now, Freddy has such power over Jason in this movie, though. Clearly, they were drilling it into our heads that Freddy is 
just one evil son of a bitch while Jason was kind of caught up in the circumstances of being a mongoloid who's extremely upset over his mother being offed. Therefore, he feels it's uh, his right to kill 190 people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> Might be right. <laughs> yeah, so, so clearly um, Jason was the victim. That's, yeah, that's what they make it seem, yes. Now, how do you feel about that? We go from a badass kind of rebel i don't know what do you i don't know what do you want to call him but to you know uh, what I, I, to a victim one that was one thing that i didn't like about the movie and that's because yeah. and i know it was probably you know the main reason i think they cast kurzinger in the role was for his eyes and his emotions and i mean the thing is jason was an emotional character in that movie and i i, I think that that kind of took away from the soulless killing machine that we knew ever since zombie Jason came to be. Right. But that's the thing, though. He was out of character. Yeah, he you're was absolutely right Entirely. Out. You know, and, and you know, yeah. I hate starting it off like this because I'm just trying to be a little technical here. Well, yeah, that's all we do here. Yeah, but the truth is I, I enjoy the movie. I really do. I really do. And I'm, and I'm going to say a lot of nice things. I don't know, maybe I should have started off the little things that are weird to me later. But, but think of this, though, Alex. You know, you gotta, you got to look at both series. That's what Jason was, you know, and he turned out to be a badass, yes. But like I said, going, going back to kind of the original concept of both of these characters, it makes sense that Freddy would be more powerful because Freddy is more powerful if you really think about it. Now, not in the sense where, you know, brute strength but if you can invade dreams dude you got the upper hand so it would make sense to intertwine these worlds and make it go down like that that's why i enjoyed the script because listen you got to make it make sense somehow you know and and i think this is the closest <laughs> way you're gonna do it you know and and like you said i i thought he was out of character too you i never thought of it in those terms but you're right it, he was he he was out of his element. He wasn't the uh, like you said the the machine going around killing people. But in the sense you gotta you gotta think well they had to make it work somehow that you know and that's what Freddie does and I think they did it in a good way. Uh, you know I, I had no problems with that in particular. You know you see people are gonna be listening to this and gonna be like what are these idiots talking about? He wasn't out of character. He's freaking going through a cornfield slashing people up, killing right. people, doing oh, I this. I love that fucking scene. Yeah, killing mm -hmm. the main character. He's he's sitting here killing all these people. How are you going to say that he's blah, blah blah? He's the same guy as he was, no matter how Freddy viewed him or no matter how, you know, they went with it. But the cornfield scene. Let's get to some of the characters and some of the events in the cornfield scene. There's some what the f moments. Right. Okay. What's what's wrong with the cornfield? Because I love the cornfield. The raver dude. What was that all about? Oh, yeah, the raver, yeah. With the bleach blonde hair. Yeah, and the, we all know a guy like that. <laughs> uh, so, so you got the fat guy. <laughs> hey, Jethro, why don't you go find yourself a pig to fuck? Like, yeah. tell me that guy was not... I hated him. He deserved to die. Dude, he, he was trying to come off as the cool nerd. Like, it's cool to be kind of nerdy. Yeah, right, dude? Like, honestly, he's like, this Everclear is kicking my ass. Like I thought, yeah. I was listening. I thought I was listening to Butthead. What is Everclear? I don't even know what the hell that is. I always wondered. It's like pure grain alcohol, pretty much. Oh, okay. Okay. So then, I don't know, man. I absolutely hated those two guys. And I'm when Jason snapped his neck back, and and that guy looked at him, dropped to the floor. I I was so happy that he felt that emotion and pain at that moment, and I was waiting for him to die. And the guy, this this freaking curly haired loser blew that scene he had the blood in his mouth already oh, and you could tell shit. that he wouldn't open his mouth and it, you could tell it was in his mouth and he was just waiting to spit it out before jason even threw the machete right it was stupidity stupid unbelievable and that is and i i kind of blame the director like why would you tell him to run with the blood in his mouth the entire time because they actually cut away from the scene he was running with the blood. He couldn't open his mouth. It looked really awkward. Then they cut away. At, at that point, they could have put the blood in the mouth. Then you film the next part where it's actually going to hit him. Then you spit it out. What the hell was that? I know why. You ready? You ready? What are we, I, I, Ronnie, you. I make movie with Freddy and Jason. 
as long as they in movie movie be good. <laughs> Who yeah. cared about the rest of it? F the details. That's right. No, you know how we're discussing it though. I I know he's laughing when he goes away, so when he's running away. But it sounds like it's probably overdubbed. Now it sounds like they were probably trying to cover up for that, Alex. Like you said, I I never noticed that he actually had the blood in his mouth, but I always remembered him doing a really doofy, out of place yeah. laugh. So I I let's I I'd love to go back and see that because I think uh, that would make sense, you know, with what you just said. Absolutely. All right, so let's get into the good characters now. You got Lori. Oh, my God. Is that not yeah. the hottest, hottest lead girl in a Freddy or Jason movie? I agree. Motorboat. See, but she didn't seem that big to be motorboated, though. That's the problem, which is what I like. Dude, even laying down, they stuck straight out. Of course they do. They're nice and perky. Like oh, that. my God. <sighs> Is she hot or what? Um, I agree. Okay, uh, do you want to get to right in the opening scene where they're all hanging out in the living room? Yeah, I downloaded that song by IMX that's playing in the background. God. It's called you My like First Time. Shui? That kid was such a douchebag. You have nice feng shui. <laughs> <laughs> that's a horrible quote of the movie. How about the other guy? <laughs> what, what's oh, Trey? dude, I love Trey, man. Tr- dude, Trey is the greatest asshole in fr- in these movies, he's like, babe, don't make me ask you twice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even like a future wife beater. He's a wi- he's like a wife beater <laughs> in this movie. He's the right. classic verbally abusive guy who's in a relationship <laughs> with a girl who's way too hot for him. Yeah, she, he did not deserve her at all. No, her face wasn't really hot, but if that Who, body, Catherine Isabel. You think her face is hot? I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, are you kidding me? I want to look at it. Little plain Jane. I disagree. Yeah. But um, her if her body was that real body in the shower, which it wasn't, yeah. if it was, though, he does not deserve her. Oh, of course oh, I know, right? Well, and I got to say, he hit that death that follows right then and there. Yeah, oh, here Probably we go. Probably one of the best deaths oh, ever. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, the dude. Uh, she runs out of the house in a towel. When yeah. she discovers the body. Well, that that's was kind of awesome. hot, though. That was hot. Yeah. I love how he's holding on to the beer, too. That's cool. Yeah, he wouldn't let go of the beer. <laughs> Hell, I wouldn't. Dude, if it was me, I would have taken one more drink of it. Oh, dude, go, exactly. How do you man. have time, though, dude? You freaking break your back. You're dead. Well, there was a, there was a little it. time between the stabbing of the spine and the snapping of the bed. <laughs> yeah, dude, not much. There was time for a swig. You'd get midair because you'd be in so much pain. You'd get midair with the beer and probably dump it on yourself because you don't oh, oh, have and you know. Can I address something too, gentlemen, too? What, what do you guys party with anybody that just rolls to parties with a flask? I mean, really, honestly. <laughs> I don't party with anybody, so I have no idea what that is. <laughs> it's not a sociable thing, really. Like, you know, flasks are kind of for, like, <laughs> serious yeah. alcoholics. Or yeah, like, wasn't that weird? Or you, if you got to get into a concert or something, but why would you roll up to a party and be swigging it right in front of a girl like ah, uh, like Lori? So, uh, what's going on? Like yeah. that's just the biggest fucking. I I hated that character, and I was so happy when uh, when he got his head handed to him or his dad's head handed to him on a plate. <laughs> Dude, let's talk about that. That was the yeah. biggest what the f moment. What the hell kind of shit was that? I mean, I no nothing made sense about that entire scene at all. First of all, let's go in order here. You got Freddy. Okay, the guy falls asleep. Freddy shows up at the end of the street. Um, right. That was really cool. I like the effect where the shadow comes up, goes to stab this guy, doesn't kill him. But yep. what? what is with Freddy talking to the camera so much? What the hell is this? He's going to explain, he's going to give us a play-by-play of what's going on. The beginning on. was one thing, but yeah, dude, you're, you're absolutely right. He's like narrating the whole movie. Oh my. That's why uh, I told you, dude, it's fucking Nightmare 4 Freddy. Yeah, you're right. Dude, he's like, it is. I don't have enough power yet. I guess they have to be more scared of me. Pretty soon, after they get afraid enough, then I'll have the power. For now, I'll let Jason have some fun. <laughs> of course, I'm exaggerating, but that's right. what it no, felt that, like. Well, no, that that was the dialogue, but I'll tell you what happened. Here's the thing. Like I said, you want dark Freddy, you watch New Nightmare. You want cheesy Freddy? Not that I didn't like it. I loved it, but if you want cheesy Freddy, 
watch Freddy vs. Jason because that is the ultimate cheese right there. I'm sorry, but it is. You're right. Okay, well, no, I and, take and it back. I, like the, I want to say a dark part of this is when he's... Um, uh, Catherine Isabel is in the boiler room, and that's a scary scene. It's going back to Freddy form, saying, you know, creepy. It's not relying on, you know, it's obviously not at the point where he's fighting Jason yet. It's it's it, it's going back to original Dark Freddy. And I think they did a good job with, with, with both. And in the scene you're talking about, you're absolutely right. It's over the top, and it's it's Freddy 4. But I think they also went back to Freddy 1, too, the original Dark yeah, stuff. Too. I, I there, agree. There's just certain scenes where it, it totally, I think it fits all around. And what's great is that, like I said, going back to this was kind of a, um, a reboot or a uh, kind of its own thing. I think with that said, they have to come to a place where it all intersects and intertwines and, and makes yeah. sense. And, yeah. and I thought it all made sense throughout the whole series. They have to address every every movie, and not every movie per se, but they have to address... Every it. aspect of their personality. Exactly. So in that aspect, I thought it was great, you know? So. All right, well, let's keep moving now. You got to... Okay, now let's get to Blake. Okay, so he wakes up from this ridiculous dream where Freddy talks to himself, or to, to us, sorry. He looks at his dad, and his dad has this dumbfounded look on his face. All of a sudden, he nudges him or something, and his head leaps off of his oh, neck, <laughs> and you've got these, these clear machines pumping sprays, yeah. sprays of what look like Kool-Aid out of his head, and mm -hmm. this guy catches it, turns, and Jason goes to... Sw to hit him, and you could tell that the way, the position of Jason's body and, and arm when he swung at this guy, it was not even going to connect. It, it, yeah. it was just going to be his hand kind of hitting Blake, and you could tell that it was just the kind of thing where you, the Jason knew the director would say, cut, when he was right about to hit him, because mm -hmm. there was no way it could have been a real hit. And then, right. with that awkward kind of swing at him, you still see this blood fly at the window, that swing and that connect that would have happened never would have made any blood go anywhere. I don't even know what he hit, the guy's head that he was holding or the kid. You couldn't even tell what he was going to hit. It was just really bad. Everything about it. What's with the head? Everything. Even even when he says, I'm okay. I'm okay. Like, come on. Yeah, dude. what like, the really? hell is that? Uh, that every, like you said, everything about that scene is fucking ridiculous. ridiculous. You know what? I've never really thought about it until now. I always thought it was ridiculous, but now that we're actually talking about it, it's almost like that much more real. That scene is beyond stupid. It's beyond stupid. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're so <laughs> right, dude. Okay, then we get... Okay, let's go back to the cornfield now. The thing that really bothered me, what the F to the 10th degree? What is with the blood that squirts out of these people when Jason hits He hit every them? single artery known to man, <laughs> Dude, yeah, apparently. It looks like they had sprinklers under their shirts of blood. <laughs> yeah, it's like when you put your, fit, when you put your thumb over a hose. And yeah. It's just... What the hell was that? And then you actually see one of these guys get killed twice. There's, no, really? Yeah, there, there's a guy with like some kind of snow hat on, sort of, and he gets killed pretty much right away when Jason gets out of the cornfield, and then he gets killed after he gets the beer sprayed on him and the fire goes out. He kills this guy again. What do you guys think about the um, the Nightmare 3 reference in this with the Western Hills and the uh, Hypnosil aspect? I love it. That. that was awesome. Really I love was. that continuity aspect, almost like, hey, we actually took the time to go back, and, uh, yeah. you know. <laughs> well, no, you guys do know that the guys that wrote Freddy vs. Jason, Damien Shannon, and Mark Swift were the same guys that wrote the remake, right? right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly, yep. Yeah. So, I mean, it seems like they are horror fans. Fans. You know what I mean? They're fans of yeah. the franchise and the character. Right. I totally so. agree. Okay, I feel, like, I feel like such an asshole, but I have more complaints. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Robert England's performance as Freddy was so bad. Dude. Really? The delivery of his lines were awful. Like I agree. Some of it was, remember? Ding, 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 ding. Tilt. Oh, dude, that, no. We're not even going to talk about the pinball scene. I hate that fucking scene. He's like, boing, 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 boing. Yeah, that, it got cartoony at one point. That was bad. I liked it. Other than that shit, I thought he did a pretty good job in it. I, I liked it personally, but... Well, here's what I'm saying. 
The delivery of the lines, I don't know if Freddy knew the situation he was in when he read the script. When Freddy's killing the Irish kid, and he comes up in his face, he says something to him, like, I want you to call your friends? Like, what does he say to him? He's like, uh, I want you to give your friends a message. Oh, and he says no, and he goes, no? Yeah. <laughs> it was just, like, so weird. And then, in the uh, in the boiler room, when, when he's going to kill the girl who's hiding in the locker... Right. Well, it's mine. <laughs> mine. <laughs> She's mine. 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 Yeah. Like that's not how you say it, you dope. You're, yeah. you're, su- you're supposed to say. You're supposed to go. <laughs> She's mine. She was mine. Like you don't say. She's mine. Like if you're saying it like. She's mine. It's, it's like almost he's a like whiny little bitch almost. Well, it's almost like you still have a chance to get her, and you better not touch her. Leave her alone. Like. You know, like, you're, like, warning Jason. He said it like he was warning Jason when it's already gone. Yeah, pretty much. There was no chance at that point. Yeah, you're supposed to emphasize the word mine in the way where she's mine! And, like, that you're angry that it's gone now. Right. It, it, uh, he, his delivery was terrible. And I know you think I'm being picky, but come on. No, I can, I can see what you're talking about. And I think, like I said, that's just Ronnie You did not, like... I, I just, I don't get, maybe he doesn't get voice inflection very well. I don't know. And then the, I know we're jumping ahead for this one line, but I'll just do this now. So, yeah. because we're talking about his lines in the movie. What yeah. the hell was with the the part where Jason, right before he tilted over that bucket and all those rods went through Jason, he was like, hey, asshole. <laughs> Up here. Up here. Like, yeah. what did he have, a, what, a, a fuck, like a duck take a shit in his mouth or something before he oh, said that? Dude, yeah, the, the word asshole comes out so yeah. awkwardly. Hey, asshole! Up here! I noticed hey. that, dude, when the first time I saw that, I said, <laughs> I, I, I just tilted my head like a dog. I said, what? Fuck, <laughs> dude! I was like, "What was that shit?" I, 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 I'm, so, dude, I'm so glad you mentioned that, bro. Because he's like, he's I forgot like, about that, dude. That was like, a big moment. He's like, "You're a bitch." Or, you know, Kelly, Kelly, Kelly Rollins' character at the one point, he's like, "Hey, you're a bitch." <laughs> <laughs> well, a- after the party, they go, and that's when <laughs> that's when uh, the what's his name. Cliff O'Malley comes in. Oh, dude, Cliff O'Malley is the greatest character in movie history. The I I know a lot of people don't I know what we're talking. Pig. Yeah, do I smell a pig? Hey, pig! Like yeah, I know I know. Lachlan Monroe, I know him. Yeah. Oh, you oh you know that dude? I know a lot of people listening don't understand. That man on campus, oh, dude. dude. Shit movie. Oh my Cliff O'Malley is my hero, dude. I love that fucking movie. Dude, the greatest movie ever. <laughs> I know. Uh, for everyone listening, if you don't understand, what's the greatest movie? <laughs> Watch Dead Man on Campus. Uh, Who the fuck are you? Fucking Kurt Loader. Fuck yeah. off. <laughs> You guys are making me want to watch that again. I gotta fuck. I gotta dig that out now. Everybody, Cliff O'Malley is the guy who played the cop in Freddy vs. Jason, <laughs> and yeah. this movie, Dead Man on Campus, starred Zach Morris from Saved by the Bell. It was like his his first real breakaway from like that kind of kid role, and he did an awesome job. And it was just oh, yeah, the did. greatest movie. It's so <laughs> funny. Kick me in the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, I. I, I I guess a blowjob's kind of out of the question. <laughs> oh my god, that's awesome. <laughs> and that was after he set a girl's hair on fire. He was still wondering if she'll give him head. That was great, and then if you watch the end of the credits, I know we're totally off with this, but it's just funny. Do you ever watch where he's like, at the end, he comes back in the apartment or something, and he's on fire? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cliff O'Malley, oh my god. All right, so then he gets to Cliff O'Malley, and what I thought was really great writing, man. Basically, Springwood made all the kids who have these who had these Freddy nightmares locked up. They go on hypnosil so they don't have dreams, and they basically erased Freddy that way. Now, mm. that that's pretty intricate writing. I love that. I don't think I would have thought of that. I right. thought that was the best way because how how do you do it? You, you quarantine them, you know? Yeah, it's weird. Exactly. It's such a weird thing. But but that's the logical step that you got to take with Freddy. You know, it's. That's always the conclusion that I that would that that made sense to me. You know how how else would you would you stop somebody like that? Well, it makes sense. Fucking put, yeah. put them on drugs and make them like zombies so they don't dream. Boom. 
All right, you got Will. Will is awesome. Well, I love that character. He's yep. the Tommy Jarvis of this movie. I was talking to Mike earlier. The thing that's so strange about that ta- that character and the approach to the role that he took was Will's a good-looking guy, and he got, like, the hottest chick in the movie. Lori is so hot, and he was dating her till he was locked up. But the way he acted was very awkward and like he wasn't integrated into society properly well, and he acted like he belonged so in, he, he acted like he belonged in that mental institution well let's pl- look obviously he's been in the institution for a while so in a sense you become disconnected from your former life and that's exactly what happened to him and that's why he acted awkward because he was disconnected and he needed to get back into it you know he needed to get back into his life because when you saw him talk to Lori, he didn't look like the kind of guy that could get her, did he? Uh, His mannerisms, no. I mean. Definitely, definitely not. But again, like I said, you, you got to remember he was in a different place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the whole situation in this movie is just crazy, and you know, I'm sure none of them really know what the hell's going on. And like you said too, he's on so many drugs in that fucking place, hitting right. the pill and all yeah. that stuff. So you know, you got to factor in that. And plus, I mean, you know, going to an institution, man, for a little while, you know, and be away from your friends for a while, dude, it's gotta fuck with your head a little bit, you know. I thought he played it pretty well. I mean, see, the thing is with this movie too, it's kind of it, all over the place. If you really think about it, look at the dad aspect. Oh, yeah. Dad, you know, what was that all about? Like, well, we are drink your juice. Like, what the fuck? Uh-huh. Dude? Like, I get it, but it just didn't, like, fit, man. Like, it seemed like they were trying to cram a lot into it. That's not to say I, I love this movie. That's true. That's a good way to say it. They try to cram a lot into it. That and just other little things in this movie where it's like, huh, that's weird. Right? They didn't have to do that. I I was liking the characters like like the other kid. Uh, what's his name? The the little kind of geek kid. Uh, I plays in uh, Fanboy. Linderman. And, Linderman. Linderman. I like. What did you guys think about him? I didn't like him. No. I always like Linderman and everything he's done. Or the character, Chris Marquette, the guy that played Linderman. I, you know, he died honorably. You know, he was. I, I wish thought he would have been. Yeah, you know what, with... Dan, you're right. That that won me over. What? When he died honorably. Dude, that was one of the only emotional scenes in the whole movie. That's right. It was. I agree. I just I feel bad that he didn't end up with Kia. I wish he would have. Right. And that whole relationship was nice too. You know, she felt bad for him because he was the. You know, I like that whole situation too with. With, with the whole teenage drama they seem to sneak in there, too, between all of this other crazy shit they got going in this movie. I thought they hit that right on the mark. I thought that was nice, you know, like you said, right. him and Kia, and then, you know, but like I was saying, you know, going down the character list, dude, one of my favorites that I loved was fucking Freebird. I mean, we haven't even talked about Freebird yet. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. the pothead. The, oh, isn't yeah, he, like, yeah, silent... Yeah. Jay or something or yeah, but ex- exactly. Jay, sir, not Silent Jay. Bob. Oh my god. What? Sorry, I'm not that big on uh, Kevin Vetterman or whatever his name is. I know. Kevin uh, Eastman. What's his name? Kevin... <laughs> I'll I'll pretend I didn't hear that. Kevin Smith. Right? S- Smith. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I saw the movie once. What do you want from me? Okay, Kia. Kia, I think is like not that great of an actress. She, it was kind of corny out. She was trying a little too hard to be cool. Yeah. I didn't like her character. Not really. I didn't hate it, though. I thought she, you know, Kelly Rowland coming from Destiny's Child. It was like her first yeah. acting gig. I can't pick apart somebody's first acting gig. I mean, she's the one who got hired. I'd blame it more on the studio than her. She did a good job, I thought, you know? The hospital scene when all the kids... With the electrocution of, of, of Cliff. Yeah, that's true. Poor, and it get, dude, I swear to God, to you, I'm not freaking kidding you. I felt very bad when he died because I love him so much. For I know dead man on campus. <laughs> what did you think of the security guard that was at the hospital? You know that that um, basically Jason kind of like uh, walked over, like crushed with the door. Oh yeah, that was cool. What did you think? Because I I had a Donald Pleasance flashback. I thought he was a Donald Pleasance lookalike. I didn't even notice that, Mike, because I'm not all into Donald such as you. Well, you'll have to go back and check it out because I'm sure you'll see it. I 
think you'll see. You know what I feel bad about? In our last episode, we, we completely glossed over the kill where Jason cuts that dude in half and he's crawling on the floor <laughs> and his body's leaking blood and it's just from his like chest and there's nothing else under his chest. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right? we missed that one. And the reason I'm bringing that up, Freebird, right? Yeah. That's how he dies, right? Didn't Jason cut him in half? Yes. That was an awesome kill. Yeah. That was pretty crazy. In the, I guess that hospital scene had a lot to it, man. How about after they, they get Jason with the hypodermic needle and he's in the back of the van and they're trying to, like, they think he's dying and they go to give him, like, mouth to mouth and take it out. And it's like... Oh, dude, that disgusting mouth. Tell me. Tell me that that mouth of his didn't look exactly like Jason Part 8. It did. Oh, yeah, dude. Yep, yep. It did, right? Yep. The, through the whole movie, it seems like these kids are right on with exactly what they got to do. Bring Jason to, you know, <laughs> bring Jason to Crystal Lake yeah. so he has home field advantage. They knew exactly what they knew way too much for this movie. I don't yeah. care how much you know about everybody. Yeah, that's yeah, bullshit. That they just you? learned who they were 20 no, minutes actually, before but that. They didn't, but the thing is, but they didn't know they had to bring them to the thing. They didn't know they had to bring him to Crystal Lake for home field advantage for the whole movie. That wasn't learned until the library. It was ten game. minutes after they just learned who fucking fr- no, that guy was real. That that guy at the party, he was real. Like they just learned right before they went to fucking Weston Hills. Yeah, but they have. Yeah, but that's why they went to Weston Hills because they knew. <laughs> no, Mike, they went there. Didn't they go there because they needed those drugs to not dream about Freddy? How yeah, could they learn the so thing. much, it's though? It was it. like a Scooby-Doo, like, on, uh, you know, for preschoolers. It was so easy for them. What, bro? Racing? Mike, you have, to, <laughs> you, you have to admit, Mike, they really figured shit out quick. I, yeah, dude, because they're smart. Kids are smart when they're bullshit. not on the I'm calling bullshit, dude. I, I'm calling bullshit. I'm I don't call tonight. bullshit because I'm telling you, they're smart when they're not on drugs, kids are. Mike, I consider myself, <laughs> like, kind of bright, like a little, a little, you know... Right. Not not the densest guy, but... Right, as do I. Yeah. I couldn't have figured that out. Well, then, d- dude, how can you not figure it out? We've been through uh, ten of the movies by this point. And I still... And they have not. Exactly. They were into yeah, the quick they, have, because they went to the library and they learned, dude, the library has power. Bullshit. The power of books. Bullshit. And research. Bullshit. Yeah, dude. The only person that they really knew, Mark, the expert, supposedly, fucking died right before that anyway, so, you know, and they were were all going off one idea, and they were like, oh, this makes sense, we can do this, get out of here, get the fuck out of here. But listen to me, Mark's spirit carried on and gave them the knowledge that they needed. I can't believe you just said that. It's the truth. (laughs) <laughs> but see the thing is with this too man is it's like these movies are so fun and and that's why i think with the whole thing with with all these storylines intertwined i thought it was too much i thought if they would have went a little bit more simpler and just stuck to the i mean you know stuck to the script really i mean i hate to to say it like that, but if they would have just simplified it a little bit, I thought it would have been a lot better. Like I said, I love the Western Hills and the hit the sill aspect, but right. it just seemed like, like, how about, like, I I hate to go back to the thing again, but when they were in Western Hills with the worm, I mean, that <laughs> worm was oh, just Oh, that was like, cool as shit. Like, come on, man, we, we got a fucking... Freddie and Jason, man, and we got a bong smoking worm. Yeah, Come that on. was so stupid, Mike. It's I awesome mean, as anything, dude. No, that was it's the cool. Best. Dude. It's it's cool for a fucking sci-fi fucking movie at three o'clock in the afternoon, bro. It's not <laughs> cool for fucking Freddie <laughs> versus Jason. What, I don't want to see that what, shit. That's what New Line wanted this to be. One of those type of movies yeah. that you sit down with your buddies and you smoke up with. Oh, fuck off, Mike. All right, ready? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get more into And listen, guys, if anyone's listening, I think we have, what, three listeners? <laughs> There's only one left now after that debacle. If anyone's listening to this, we're not, we're not exactly ripping apart this movie. We're just talking well, about it. You I know love what I mean? the movie. It's fun to talk about weird things or things that don't make sense. It just, it's just more fun to do. Because these movies don't make sense in general, so it's fun to be like, you know, what yeah. the fuck, you know? 
We have the best time. We wouldn't be talking about these movies if we didn't one way or another love the shit out of them. Exactly. Now, you you have to understand that and just go with this. Cause, right. Because it's just better that way. Trust me, it's so much better than us going, wasn't, wasn't it great when, when Freddy was like part one and the that goat? That sounds like me. <laughs> I know. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. And, and, and there was a goat at the front door. Remember the goat? The goat in the hallway. Oh, goat. Remember the goat in the hallway in part one when he was dragging her body? You know, like, you don't want to hear people do a show like that. It's just more fun this way. So please, we're not making fun of this movie. We're just having fun here. Exactly. Know? Disclaimer. So let's have more fun. Ready? <laughs> what the hell was with Jason being afraid of water? Now, that I know. Was awesome. Dude, stupid, listen. Dude. Mike, he walked through water to kill people in part three, six. Seven. Yeah, but eight. this is a different Jason. This is this is look, the Jason in Freddy vs. Jason is not regular Jason, is not zombie Jason. This is sympathetic Jason. And that is out of character. Well, it was to, in his defense though, it was in a dream and Freddy was technically going after the the little kid Jason and basically deep Digging into your deepest fears, that's where that fear of water came from. You know what I mean? So that kind of plays on what Freddy does. Yeah. He gets well, in and he, you know. You're right. I look stupid. Oh, that's all good. It made no sense what I just said. Okay. <laughs> hey, listen. <laughs> you do a, a long show like this, you're bound to say stupid things. Now, right. yeah. okay. Yeah. How about this? What do you guys think of the recreation of Jason's drowning in the movie? They they even put that sack on his head like part two, man. That was an awesome nod. Oh, I love that part. Yeah, I love that part. I wonder how much they had to pay Paramount to get the rights to use that sack. <laughs> oh, please. I don't... I didn't picture Jason's drowning being that way. And what the hell was with the two counselors having sex up against the cabin? Kids were right around when he was drowning. So any kid in the right mind, unless they're really stuck up mean little bastards would have jumped in the water to save the kid exactly and what was he wearing what was with those dirt bags sweatpants and that baggy shirt it looks like what i wear on a weekend when i'm not going out <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> like he was dressed like me on the weekends well, I, wear every day. <laughs> like, like, I love that sequence though dude it was so cool to see it back at the camp and kind of took you out of the movie for a minute I love that scene I thought yeah. it was one of the cooler scenes because I've always I've, I know I've talked uh, I've talked to both of you about this too how you know what I expected the remake to be and how they should have went you know even further back than the original and done a little bit more backstory and showed you know the whole Jason getting picked on at the camp as a kid. I think it's a great story. Not not maybe the whole movie, but, you know, you could do a 20-minute, maybe half-hour opening of, of how that happened. And to see it portrayed in this film, even for a second, how they did it, I, th I was loving it. Yeah. I, and, and, Mike, I know you're very emotional, and you cry during, like, you you cry during uh, the opening of a movie when you see the Dimension logo. Dimension? Correct. <laughs> Lord. That would have that would have made Freddy vs. Jason an even better movie if it was a dimension film. <laughs> just like, just like ignore that. Ready? Now, this even tugged at my heart. I, this was the first movie where you ever felt an emotional attachment to Jason when when he's paddling in the water and Laurie goes, Jason, Jason Voorhees. Like, didn't you feel like, oh my God, that's him? It's really, you know, didn't you have that little emotional? Oh, dude, absolutely. No, and I, and cried at, made... I, I cried at the end of the movie, not that piece of shit. Dude, that scene is so badass, though, when Freddy comes up from the water and fucking right on the dock. Oh, my God, I love that. And they fuck with the film, dude. Wow, dude, you want to talk about an awesome scene that was, huh? Mm-hmm. Cinematic masterpiece. Mike, what is your problem with this scene? I like the part before that where Freddy's like, I told you this bitch was dead on her feet. You you know, Mike. Come on, don't you have something? Aren't don't you have any depth to you tonight? What's, what's wrong? Uh, I, what's wrong I do, with but it's just that that part to me is not emotional. The part that was emotional was when Linderman died. That was emotional. Um, when Kia died, that was emotional. Um, even when when um, at the end of the movie, when um, 
you know, Jason came out of the water carrying Freddie's head. That was emotional. Oh my! But, you see, ridiculous. but something like that, uh, you know, where where <laughs> where mongoloid Jason is getting picked on. Who cares? We all knew it happened. Okay, Dan. <laughs> in part one, you know, Jason's character, like we talked earlier, he was dead, right? Yeah. You know, this kind of brings me back. That scene brings me back to part one. So let's, like, jump back to episode one for a second here. Okay. You know, I always thought when Brenda heard Jason, like, yelling for help. Remember that scene in part one? Yep. Yeah. It was really, like, I always, I always thought that it was really... Jason's ghostly cry, like e- like echoing through the night air every Friday the Thirteenth at Camp Crystal Lake. Like, that I, was one of the creepiest scenes of that movie. Yeah. Yeah. Like I never believed it was Miss Voorhees just trying to trick Brenda. No, yeah, but it never. was. I totally agree. Yeah. Yep. You know, like a ghost haunts a house. I felt like every Friday the Thirteenth in the night, you'll hear those cries. You know how they say like sometimes you can still hear him calling. For his yep. mother, you know, I think that I think that's what that was, and I think that adds such a whole nother dimension to that movie. But yeah, I totally agree with that. I'm getting chills. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, a, a scene that gave me chills in this movie. Let's get to that. Mm. When Freddy realizes that he's in the real world now and turns around and looks at Jason, and that music hits. <laughs> 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 Or something yeah. like that. Oh my god, yeah. dude! Bad ass, bro. Bad I got ass. chills. I got chills galore, and I was like, "Let's get ready. My boy is gonna uh, whip your corny ass. Let's go." Hold on a second. My boy was flying Dan. in the theaters at that point. Did you, Dan? Did you say you got ass? <laughs> what? what? I thought you said you got ass. Like maybe during that scene, you got ass. <laughs> Uh, not that I recall. Oh. He's cool, but he's not that cool, Mike. There was a room full of people. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was, uh, the Devil Wears Prada. Oh, you just, <laughs> pop, you just pop on the lap, insert, thrust, repeat. Wow. Okay. Good to know, bro. Dan, are any women going to enjoy Mike after the this whole series is over? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, next question, please. Yeah, next question, please. Okay. <laughs> All right, so get back to it now. Jason's ready to kick your boy's ass, and you're like, yeah, oh, wait, wait, your boy's ready to kick Jay Freddy's ass. Go I'm going to I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm a huge horror fan, but yeah. I, I never really got into Freddy. I, Neither did I, really. I tried to. I really, really tried to. I swear to God. I, I went out, I bought the box set when it was still on VHS, and all that stuff, but you know, the only Freddy movie I like is p- two. Part two. That is yeah. it. I think that's the most dark, evil guy. I think that's that embodied what I always thought Freddy was growing up. And Mark Patton was freaking awesome as Jesse, and the whole right. story, and the way he came out of your body. Oh my! And then, uh, dude. That was just the greatest movie ever. That and was such a great interview when you uh, when you got to interview Mike Patton too. But, yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, that was our actually our last show on Harbid and yep. for for nine months until we started this thing up. And yeah, maybe you know me and Mike were talking. Maybe uh, I'll put that interview up one day if anybody you know because you know I'm sure a lot of people cycle through this site and they probably didn't hear that. So yeah. Okay. See, the, the thing about this movie too, though, guys, is it's like you know. At the end there, when it's the battle and it's on, you know, like you said, there's just such an excitement. It's almost like, okay, you know, we're selling the fact that it's a matchup. I remember even the promotional things, they were doing a weigh-in and everything. Oh, yeah, remember that? Remember that? that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So So to hear that guitar riff come in, holy fucking shit, like we were saying. But after that, it, it... it was such a bad ass battle scene and we got to talk about that because you know some aspects like you know hey asshole up uh, here like yeah. that was <laughs> I actually like that actually part. that was a better delivery just now <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, like, but it's like, you know, stuff like that was over the top. But overall, dude, you know, and, and when they're on the dock and just the, the, the whole thing and then how they incorporated not just those two, but, you know, you got the, the, the teenagers, quote unquote, 
you know, still trying to take care of business like any other slasher flick, whether it be Freddy or Jason. So I love how it wasn't just those two because you got, you know, whether you love or hate both of them or, you know, side with one or the other, you got to have that other aspect to where, let's face it, they're both still evil motherfuckers. And if it was just them at the end, it wouldn't have uh, had as much, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Gusto, I think. Impact. Well, exactly. He, here's what I find very weird about the whole, the whole um, chemistry of this whole thing and the whole presentation of it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well done, sir. I'm sorry. This is my fourth beer now. Hey, listen, I want to have a party here tonight. Okay. Yeah. So the show is sponsored by Bud Light. Uh, yeah. Actually, uh, Miller Genuine Draft. <clears throat> That's right. MGD, oh, all the way. Oh, MGD, uh, M- MGD, baby. All right. <laughs> so he- here's the very interesting thing. I think. This is a this is a new line cinema. Of course, it's Freddy's thing. You know, we all know that. Yep. Mm-hmm. But Jason was made to be the hero just from being the victim. Like in our minds, they wrote it for us to root for Jason to overcome the evil guy. That's exactly what they said to Alex. That's what Ronnie you said. He said he wanted for Jason to be the hero type. And that's exactly you're right on. Isn't that strange in a new line movie? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Which basically pissed on Jason for you know, two movies in a row. I mean, we like Jason X, but you know, most people think that was totally stupid. But right. I think, though, with the whole aspect of Freddy just dicking on Jason the whole movie and him having the upper hand for it to be evened out at the end and then have him, like you said, be sympathetic. And uh, you notice in that scene, too, he fucking starts running. He runs as he throws Freddy's head through those windows as he's oh, running him oh, down. Yeah. He yeah. runs full fucking throttle. Jason doesn't run. Yeah, shut up, nerd. I, mm-hmm. You're right. I never noticed that. So it, it, they were saying that too, basically like, you know, that just shows right there. <laughs> Jason's pissed. Jason fucking wants Freddy's head. And, you know, yeah. he gets it, but, you know. You know, my, my argument in the next episode, the remake, was going to be, you know, a lot of people said, oh, why is he running? He don't run. My My argument was going to be that most people, most casual fans, are only familiar with the zombie Jason. Right. Exactly. He doesn't run. In part six, at most, he sped walked. Right. You know? Yeah. Like he, he doesn't run. So I think that's, that's what he people... does in part two, Baghead. He's fucking running through the woods, running, running, running. Yeah, and, and Jason ran after um, Chris in part three in that dream when he broke through the door. Yeah, and Ted White when he's running in part four, yeah, they all yeah, run. They all run. So uh, when he's running after, you know, when he's trying to decide between Tommy and his sister, and he runs after her, get out of here. Watch a fucking movie. <laughs> Listen to our reviews of him too. Yes. Of course, me being the uh, jerk off of the show, I'm going to complain again. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking jerk off. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, people are going to be like, does this guy like movies at all? Obviously not. <laughs> no, listen, I do, but like we explained, it's just better to talk about problems. Welcome to the Player Haters Ball. Hey, listen, you know that when you meet somebody, like, the best way to communicate is just bitch about things. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's just how mm-hmm. it works. That's how it goes. That's, that's, the, that's the way it works. Okay. I have a couple of problems with the fighting scene. Okay. Yeah. Well, I have a few, too. Okay, you're good. Okay. I have none. Of course you don't. Oh, dude. Okay, how come they clearly give the full advantage to Freddy in all of the dream fight sequences? Then you also make Freddy sort of the better fighter in real life. What the hell was that? Why is he doing all these jump up and knees to the stomach and elbows to the back and kind of really beating the shit out of Jason? He throws the rods through him. He's hitting those propane tanks. And and Jason finally gets him back kind of on the dock. But I think even after that, it's even because he fucking puts his, uh, you know, his his glove through his fucking heart or through his chest and... They, he finally does catch up, but you're right. Freddy totally has the upper hand. When he's fucking just stabbing him, like like you said, jumping up, stabbing him, fucking up there, then he's down, stabbing him. He's killing him. It's almost like quicker with the speed and, you know, the, yeah, you're right. He, 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 he had the upper hand. 
Where where the hell was Jason? Where was Jason's shining upper hand part? I mean, he had a few good little moments, but damn, like when he when he dragged him through that window, like you were talking about, you were like, all right, this is gonna kick ass. But then, right. but then, what the f moment? Jason takes one arm and throws Freddy fifty feet in the air. What the hell was that? Yeah, exactly, dude. So stupid. Well, how even how he got caught on those things, how Jason got caught on those things in fucking midair, it was just Looney Tunes shit at one point, dude. Mm-hmm. It was mm-hmm. like, you know, and then with the, I thought actually that the rebar falling was a pretty cool thing. Like, I thought, obviously, the delivery, as we've gone over many times now, was, was fucking ridiculous. But when that went down, that was cool, dude, how it went right through, and then he fucking pulls it right out. Like, it was yeah. a gore fest, and that's another thing, you know, between all the kills and we talked about the most ridiculous kill ever with that kid you know Blake there but you know you look at that aspect at the end dude where it's just like bloody gory it was almost like yeah here we go now we're in a fucking slasher movie and I gotta say it held its own you know what that blood was way over the top but I kind of enjoyed it though I I really it was a monster fest, you know? It was made to be, you know, two fucking evil motherfuckers. How do you, th- you know, it's not going to end nice. And I think they, that when they went over the top at the end, you know, and even with Freddy's claw at the end there, you know, coming through, coming through him and all that, that was so badass, dude. It's just raw, ruthless. It's everything you would ever want to see in, between a match with these two. And they lived up to it. They really did. And they could have cropped out and, 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 you know, gone half-asking it or whatever, but no. Like, you know, maybe, like, Laurie Strode chopping off Michael Myers' head in H2O. That's fucking shocking, you know? Stuff like that. Stuff like that you remember. And and that lived up to it. And, and, and this lived up to it. And there's a lot of movies that don't. So, that's why I loved it. They ended on the fucking best note ever. Such a high note in that movie. That Those battle scenes are so memorable. Alright, Mike, who do you think won in the end? Jason. Well, what about the wink? Is that basically telling us this was all kind of, it was all in vain, and really Jason didn't win anything? No. It just, I think it, it's a lot of you wink. being ambiguous and saying, ha ha, this is a horror movie. <laughs> yeah. No, the wink is going to be a sequel. That, yeah, exactly, the sequel that never took place. That yeah. should have. Now, what did you guys think of Jason's look? Because we talked about the two eye aspect too. There's a little continuity thing. It was horrible. Other than that, yeah, he had like a lazy eye. Other than that, yeah, though, I love the way he looked. I thought it was pretty fucking badass. Like that was pretty much quintessential Jason, if you ask me. But it was I didn't the the back of his head was a little too dark. It was like all black, and it seemed like you know you talk about, but it makes sense, I guess, if he was in the ground for that long. But then again, that doesn't make sense because the the body would be decomposed at that point. So. But going back to what is Jason? Is he dead? Or who knows? You know, we could talk who about knows? that until the fucking cows come home. Did you guys like the overall look of him, other than those two little things? Or, well, not no. little, but those two issues. No, Mike says no. I, I didn't, no, you didn't like him at all. Not at all. Dan, I I agree. I don't like him at all. Hmm. I, I honestly, I don't like any of his looks in any New Line movie. I think he looked perfect in part seven, eight, four, and two. I think Jason goes to hell. I know that Justin thinks he looked awesome. I thought he looked terrible. I know. I agree. The Jason, Uber Jason was cool in Jason X. The other one was just, I didn't get it. I didn't like yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Too, a little too much clothes or something. I don't I don't know. And and, and the mask, he kind of looked like a like a, he was on the Mighty Ducks or something. Like, <laughs> it looked like <laughs> a duck. <laughs> it looked weird. His mask in part 10 or whatever looked weird. Yeah. Okay, let's go to Kills. Let's talk about the greatest ones. Of course, you got the one stabbing on the bed, snapping the bed up. Then you got, okay, how about this? The double impalement. The girl in the cornfield, very reminiscent of part two. Oh, I sh- love that kill. I was just thinking about that, dude. Then he then he flung the guy 50 feet, and I don't like stuff like that. Like I said, when Jason threw Freddy with one hand 50 feet, I don't like it. I don't like when you throw pe- – I think it's unrealistic. I don't care. That you say that Jason's strong? That stuff is stupid. I want it to be real, man. Uh, I don't. I don't want. I, of course, I'm talking about a guy who comes back to life 50 times. I want him to be real. Right. There were a lot of, like I said, Looney Tune, fucking Roadrunner, Wiley Coyote moments in this movie. 
So, you know, it was just a lot of it was over the top. But, see, here's the thing about this movie, though. I think it was kind of meant to be just, like, a really fucking fun time while adhering to, you know, a lot of, like, the things that we're saying, you know? I think we're we're touching on a lot of cool things and stuff that they went back with, but they're also kind of going in a new direction to where, all right, guys, we got Freddy and Jason. We're going to kind of go all out with this. Whether you like it or hate it, I kind of respect it for what it is. It doesn't take itself that seriously to where it'd be like oh you know this is i'm really into this and i'm trying to fucking follow the story no they had fun with it they you know they were fucking throwing each other around fucking throwing rockets at each other you know it was meant to be lighthearted. i think to a certain extent you know what i mean yeah yeah right so i appreciated that all right what'd you think of kia calling jason uh christmas sweater wearing faggot and then he points to Jason, turns around. He I, This makes no sense to me again. He hits her with a machete, but instead of cutting her in half, it actually propels her into a tree. I don't get that, but okay. Let's suspend disbelief here yeah. and just say, what do you think of the kill? I hate that kill. It doesn't make any sense. Like he said, it's stupid. It's stupid. No, I, I like it. I thought it was neat because like all of a sudden it's like... Jason is, like, all-powerful, and she probably didn't weigh a thing for her to be able to go... I loved how... I loved the setup for that when Freddy does the little turnaround, you know? That's yeah, great, that, dude. That that's, was fun. That's, that's fun. classic, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, it makes it fun. Yep. When you do stuff like that. Originality of storyline, I give ten. it a ten. 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 A- absolutely well thought out. I yep. couldn't think of it. Like I said, if I watch a movie that I could have thought of, it's not that good. Yep. Point. Yep, couldn't have thought of it. So, right. Hottest girls, like I said, Monica Kina. <laughs> so so freaking hot. Her lips, her face. Her... Catherine Isabel. Yeah, Catherine Isabel. Even though it was a body double, I couldn't get a read on her because of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and say she's just okay because I don't want to get credited for saying she's hot. <laughs> since it's not a, uh, since that wasn't a true picture of her we'll edit it mike we'll get him kia kia's pretty pretty hot uh i don't like her acting but she's a good looking girl the girl at the opening scene the girl i was just gonna the... say yeah that doesn't count. <laughs> oh yes it does oh it counted it, it me. that was a quintessential friday the 13th scene and that's exactly what it was made out to be quintessential gratuitous nudity exactly and we're just about to go here sex and nudity uh her you got the the body double in the shower, super hot. The sex scene was that same girl riding trays. Uh, I mean, uh, let's have people. Sorry. They're going at it, too. <laughs> yeah, they are. Going at it in that scene. Yeah, they're having a good time after uh, before she took that shower. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Fucking drunk off of fucking two beers. All right, this, this is pretty funny awards for this movie. Best couple in the movie. <laughs> uh, Will and, uh, yeah. I, my favorite is Trey and his girlfriend. Trey was the that was the greatest couple ever. Mm. Babe, don't make me ask you twice. Mm. I told you not to kiss me after you smoke. Yeah, go take a shower. Your hair smells like menthol anyway. <laughs> Babe, you know I don't like to be touched after. <laughs> that guy was such an asshole. How about when he shows up fucking all fucking dead in the cornfield in her dream sequence? <laughs> that was great too. <laughs> that was weird, man. Like that was her nightmare, though. Do you know what I'm saying? Like that kid was her nightmare. <laughs> you, you you know what I like about it when he was like, "Don't make me ask you twice." In the cornfield, she like flinched. Yeah. That was really cool. <laughs> yeah, she was. She's still scared of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah I love she, that dude. Yep. That really, that made me feel like it was a real relationship. (laughs) Yep, exactly. All right, let's rate this movie. I'm going to give this, even though Kane wasn't in it, and like I said, it was like the Bears playing in the Super Bowl without Jay Cutler, I'm going to say they did a good enough job. I give them credit. It was a little over the top, a little stupid sometimes. Some things made no sense. With all that taken into consideration, I'm going to give it a 7.5. Hmm. Okay. Mike, I give it a 9. Me too, Mike. I'm with you with the 9. I was teetering between the 9 and a 10. I don't think it was over the top to be a 10. I don't think anything really was, was shocking. You know, it takes a lot to get a 10 in my book. So definitely a 9. I love this movie. 
out of all of them. Even with all the fake blood and yep. all that stupid and the head popping off, all that doesn't stuff. matter. I just love this movie, and like I said before, too, guys, this is the first one that I saw in the theaters. I know I'm like five movies behind you guys, but well, we got to go back to the nostalgic uh, aspect of it, and uh, you know, it's just uh, seeing that on screen was was really fun, you know, yeah. and and that's it. then I got it on DVD. And I just love that movie. And, you know, with all its flaws, I just, I love it. And it's got that special place in my heart. So, bam. All right. Well, we hope you enjoyed the 11th installment of the 12 Days of Friday the 13th. We got one left, guys. And this this journey is over. And uh, we'll never talk about these movies again. <laughs> never. Not never even reference again. them. No. Oh, you can I'm sure it'll come up some point or another, but, you know, nothing major. This is about it. Uh, yep. Look for us tomorrow when we embark on the remake of Friday the 13th. Yeah. The end of the journey. Oh, it's going down. It's going down. It's going down, son. You've been listening to Rabbit and Blue Radio with the Skeleton Crew exclusively at HorrorBid.com. <laughs>